Hey, and welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. It is launch day. It is the best day of the summer here as we begin our study of planet Earth together with you. Now, today we're starting week number one, and this is called the inner core, where it all began, and the full center of this, I really want it to have that texture. So we're gonna be playing with back posts and front posts as we get slightly bigger in order to do this. So it's gonna be a very quick week because as we get bigger, obviously the slower that we're going to get. Now I got lots of great tips within this particular one because you may wanna strategize your colors so that the colors land exactly where you want it to. Remember in the intro, I told you that maybe you wanna plan it, this is where you're gonna to wanna to do it. So for this week, we're gonna get you started and without further ado, let's head on into the studio and let's get started right away. So let's play with the study of planet Earth and I have all 10 balls here. Technically you only need nine but I use the 10th in order to doctor the colors. What I would recommend and again this is completely up to you, you'll notice that the afghan consistently goes in color sequence. Now the best way to do that is to make sure that one ball jumps to the other ball with the, uh, within sequence. So you wanna keep the sequence going so that you don't end up with a section of color that is barely in the afghan so that it looks like it's going to be wrong. So you'll notice here you would think that the center would be blue but if you can see that this is here, it's like this so we know that there's green in there. So what I would recommend to you is dig your fingers into to the center of the balls and pull up the colors that you that are right in the center so we can see that green is there. So I want you to do that uh, for at least nine of your balls and you can determine what the starting color is by just opening up and just seeing if everything is in there. Because it's round, wound tightly is that you'll notice that the colors may be different as you're working your way through. So as I'm doing my very last one, now what I want to do is just line them all up so that I know which one is gonna go in order. So if I know that the outside color is one color, I'm going to look for the next ball that has the next color that is associated to it. So this ball here can be number one, this can be number two. But what happens when you end up with a color that doesn't match? So what I'm gonna do here off camera, is that I'm gonna grab my trusty marker and I'm gonna say this is number one. So this is ball one because the blue on the outside of there matches the blue for here. So this is ball two. And so the outside of this one is also blue. So is there another blue? Doesn't look like it my friends. So what do we do when there's no ball that matches the outside? That's an easy one. Let me show you. So the outside ball of the other one of number two was blue. So the next one that I wanna match has to be blue but there is no ones that are in the middle that are blue. So what I'm gonna just do is dig in and pull out this green completely. Because it's in cake format it's very easy to do and pull out the green until it changes blue. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna leave this green off to the side and when there's green in the pattern later on, what I'm gonna do when I get to the section of a green of another ball, I'm going to put this green with that other color green and yes it'll be longer in color strand but the fact is is that it will never look out of sequence and that's pretty awesome. So then this ball would be number three. So continue along and so my green is the next color up. So do I have another green here? If not I have to do the same thing and what I'm doing is I'm looking for the green that is closest to the center so I can just match it all up completely. So that's how I would doctor my balls. So after going through my 10 balls that I have, this is all that I pulled out of the centers in order to have things match up. So every one of them has been labeled like so and that I just have to look for the ones that are labeled earlier so that I can see. See how this orange? Then we'll jump to the orange of this middle one. Even though it'll be a longer colorway in this orange, it will never look out of place. Do not throw these out. You'll use these in order for you to finish off spaces and the 10th ball is also used for, for you to be able to do that as well so that you can pick and pull colors just in case things are not finishing uh, where you would like them to do. So now that we've doctored our balls, I call it doctored our balls, we're going to start with our first ball and let's get everything put away and let's start clue number one. So as you begin clue number one, what I want you to do is that I want you to start off with a fresh color. So it's absolutely this the start of a new color. So this is what I had to pull out of it in order to get there. So all I'm just gonna do, do not waste it, save it for later, put it in your box and save it with the rest of your yarn. So when you have this color you can do that. So don't waste any yarn, you don't need to. So I want you to start with a fresh 
section of the ball and therefore the middle of your particular afghan the study of planet earth will have the same color that will all match so you don't end up with a really unusual color change right at the very beginning. So here's week number one. There's a total of seven weeks for this stitch along and we're gonna be starting off in the very center just like you see here and get ourselves going. Now you're gonna be using Bernat Pop. We've already talked about our yarn you need at 10 balls. If you are gonna substitute your yarn you need about 2800 yards in order to do that. So you'll need a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook and with each one I put something fun that was interesting about Planet Earth as this was my model for being able to go. You have also the abbreviation key. You also have a set of instructions that you will see and I have put certain notes and so the colors of jumping from one ball to another and using extra balls in order to finish things have been uh, marked here as well and also working from the center of the ball uh, matching the outside colors I've also just covered and beginning chain three at the beginning of the round counts as a double crochet front post in this particular week. So there's also a crochet diagram that we're gonna be doing eight rounds today and the eight rounds are going to be giving us the look and it's actually not hard and we're gonna get started right away and then we're gonna begin this. So let's begin. We're gonna be chaining three. This does not count as a stitch. So you will notice that usually when you do this you go chain four and it's a four chain from the hook. I didn't want this to count. I wanted this to fill in the space so that you don't end up with any um, unsightly gaps right in the very center of your afghan. So we're gonna chain up three and then we're gonna put 12 double crochets in around here and then in the next round we're going to expand and then we're gonna start doing the front and back posts in order to get the textured look that you see. So let's begin. Let's create a slip knot. This is considered easy to intermediate level depending on which pattern that we're working with within the stitch along. You'll notice that this is a great learning opportunity for you today. You're gonna chain three to begin. So one, two, three and as promised that is not a stitch. So going third chain from the hook I want you to put in 12 double crochets all the way around. So just go one, so in the third one away and two, three, and 12. Once you have your 12 I want you to double count. So make sure that this chaining that you had does not count as one of them. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Once you're satisfied join it to the top of the first double crochet not the chain space and uh, not the chain but the first double crochet and pull nice and tight and see because I did that extra one that it did not count you end up with a nice closed circle. So if you were bearing in the yarn at this time you can get rid of it at that time at this time and if not just use a tapestry needle if you've not done that or just pull out and retry again and bury it as you go. Let's move on to round number two. So round number two we're gonna chain two does not count as a stitch. Again I want you to fill it fills in the space on its own. So in each stitch all the way around I want you to put in two double crochets in there. So two into each so there will be a total of uh, 12 sets of two giving you 24 stitches. So put another two in the next one and do that all the way around please for round number two. Once you come all the way around you'll notice that this is leaning over that it's not a stitch that's just part of the original stitch that you have. So I want you to join it to the top of the first chain, uh, double crochet. Ignore that chain two and when you pull that together see nice and closed. Let's move on to number three and we're gonna start our texture which is part of the whole point of this afghan today. So what we have here is that the symbols here with the hooks are representing back and front posts and you can see on the side here this is what they're meaning. So the, when the loop is turned this way it is a back post double crochet. When it's turned the other way it's a front post. So when you look at this one here I'm going to have you join it in a way that will make the first chain an actual back post or sorry an actual front post double crochet and then you want to apply another one to there. So then there will be one back post in the next one and then two front posts in the next. So it's it's basically uh, one and two, one and two all the way around. So let's get ourselves started. The way I'm gonna start number three is, is unique so just pay attention and let's begin. So what happens here, see if you pull it apart this is to chain two, ignore that. It's none of your business. <laughs> Just stay out of that uh, stitch because it's holding it from making it look like there's a gap. So coming to the first one of the two and I want you to slip stitch on the front side for, with the front post. So just going into the side of the post and slip stitch. So pull them through and through. And what that did is that just shifted you to use that front post instead. Now chain three. So one, two, three. So this chain three creates the look of a front post double crochet. And in that same post I want you to front post double crochet. So coming to in from one side out the other on the front side of the project and just double crochet. So the next one here is gonna be a back post double crochet. So wrap the hook, 
come from the back side out through the post and then pop it back out to the back and stay to the back and double crochet. So this particular round is basically the next one is gonna be two front post double crochet into the same one and then the next one you guess it, it is a back post double crochet and this is gonna start the spoking effect right in the middle of your afghan. So the next one is two front post double crochet and then next one yeah that's right it's a back post double crochet. So please do that same thing going all the way around and this is round number three. When you come all the way around the last stitch will be a back post double crochet and that's not think, that's nothing special I'm just keeping it in line with the pattern count and then what you're going to do is join it to the top of the first chain three and pull things nice and tight and therefore you will have what appears to be 12 spokes. So look what's poking up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So once you have that done we're now going to move on to round number four. So in round number four what's gonna happen is that we're gonna slip stitch to the front side again and the first two stitches are each gonna be a front post double crochet and we're going to expand the back post double crochet this time to putting two in there so that it will be equal of two front post double crochet and two back post double crochet as we're expanding outward. So that's where we're gonna be paying attention. So two front post double crochets in a row and then two back post double crochets in the same. Let's begin round number four. Okay so let's begin. We're just going to wrap our hook into the front post of the chain three of the row below and pull through and through. So just poking it from behind and then that will keep it looking like it's supposed to and chain three. So one, two, three. So the next one is a front post and we're gonna keep it as a front post so make it a front post double crochet and then the next one back here is a back post double crochet and we're gonna put two of those back posts around the same post. So one and go in again the second one into the same post and that keeps it towards the back. So to reiterate the first two here are gonna be a front post double crochet each and the back post you're gonna apply two back posts around the back post that is already there and this will expand it equally going all the way around and this is round number four. Continue that same idea and I'll see you at the end of this round. So once you come all the way around the last one here is two back posts double crochet in the same one and just join it to the top of the chain three. So round number five we're gonna expand again and we're gonna expand again on the front post this time. So let's just come around and just sink your hook in to the front post and just to do a slip stitch chain three and that counts as a front post double crochet and in the same one again I want you to front post double crochet. So here is your sequence. So the next one front post double crochet is gonna stay as a front post double crochet and the next two back post double crochet are going to stay as a back post double crochet. Okay so the repeat pattern is about to start now. So the first one of the two of the front posts is gonna have two front post double crochets in it. So one and two and then the next one you're just gonna keep as a front post double crochet and then the next two are a back post double crochet each. Okay. So the first one gets two front posts then a front post and then one back post into each of the others. So please continue that around. This is round number five. So I'm coming up all the way around the last two are one back post double crochet each. Nothing special just keeping within the count. So you're just going to join it to the top of the first chain three. So we're gonna do more, one more round like this and then we're going to be expanding, uh, sorry we're gonna continue then and get rid of the post and work and then it gets a little bit easier. So what we're going to do for round number six is the final. So I want you to slip stitch into the chain three in the front side and slip and chain three. So here is this unique one. So I decided that when I did this I didn't want the groove uh, depth to be any wider so I kept just the top being wider. So the very next stitch is going to have two front post double crochet and then the next front post double crochet keep it as a front post double crochet. So if you're realizing the first one is a double front post double on its own the middle one of the three has two front post double crochet and then the third one has only one. So the expansion is happening right in the center here and what this is doing is instead of leaning off and out it's just gonna stay completely straight. So the next two are in the back post double crochets. They're already there just to fill those in back post double crochet each 
and let's review one more time. So you have three front post doubles. The first one is one by itself and the expansion is gonna happen in the second one. So you're gonna put two front post double crochet in the second one and then one front post double crochet in the third one and then the back post double crochet is one into each. So please do that all the way around for round number six. So we're coming up all the way around on number six and we have our expansions. It's awesome. Life is good. You're going to then just join to the top of the first chain three. Let's move along to round number seven. So we're almost done. You'll see it's nice and flexible and this is a great texture so far. So it's like the centrifuge really. So we're going to chain up one and we're going to put one single crochet in the top of the first um, chain three space, chain, chain three. So one and then two. So two into the top of that one and I just want you to make sure that you're paying attention to all of the stitch work. So here's the next one and so the next five in a row are each going to be one single crochet. So one, two, three, four, and five and I want you to notice something. When I designed it, the first one that pops up the front post double crochet always gets two single crochets in it if you're keeping count. So one and two and then the next five are by themselves. So one, two, three, four, and five and guess what? The front post double crochet is next. So then that will have two and then five and then two and then five. Please do that all the way around. This is round number seven and only one more to round to go for clue number one. So I'm coming up to round to the end of round number seven. So we have a just choice to make and when I designed this, this is why I had the notes about I'm um, controlling your colors with the tenth ball. So we're just going to join to the top of the first or to, to the first single crochet. So let's look towards the ball that we have because I bet you're looking at it now and thinking hmm there's not a lot of blue left. So now you have a choice to make and let's make those decisions now. So we have a choice to make. I don't have enough blue to go around. I'm just experienced enough that I know. So what I'm gonna do here and this is just my choice and you can decide what works for you. If you want things to be randomized as they come out you can do that as well and I'm just gonna pull the remaining of this blue out and I'm going to snip the blue and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna finish this blue here and I'm going to save this for another time that I have blue and I'll add it in then. So you know sometimes manipulation is awesome. So I'm going to start off the next round as a fresh round so that I don't end up with a color that is changing midway through. Because your eyes always go to the center of anything, right in the center of the afghan if it's gonna change anywhere that looks abnormal your eyes are gonna go to it each and every time. It's just a guarantee. So save this for another time and then get your ball ready for another color as we begin then the final round number eight. So let's begin your final round number eight and you have some choices to make. The pattern say, states to where you joined you can actually um, have it so that it, you can do a standing double crochet. I'm gonna show you a cheating technique as well so that you can not accidentally look like you have a stitch left over. So what I want you to do is that join it right where the first one is and you can either go in there slip stitch chain up three and that counts as your first double crochet or you can do a standing double and I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So put it onto the hook and pinch so it doesn't rotate and wrap the hook once and then going in to the stitch pulling through and then pull through two and two and that's a standing double crochet. So that's pretty awesome right? So I buried it in as I went and I wanna put another double crochet in there as well. So the next six double crochets are each are one double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five and six just like that. And now the next one has two in it. So that's your combination for this. So there's gonna be two into this one and then six by itself and then two and then six and then two and six and I want you to do that all the way around. I'm gonna show you how to finish off so that you can uh, hide this opening gap that would appear if you were to do it normally. So I'll see you then and remember it's two and then six and I'll see you at the end of this round. So as we come back around the final six stitches are in and I'm gonna show you a cheating technique. So one, two, three, four, five and six. 
Now I'm technically done but you see how it looks like there's an extra space so when I go to join it there will always be a gap. I want you to change that sixth one. So watch this is totally cheating but it's awesome. So the last stitch what I want you to do is treat that stitch plus this um, joining space as one. So wrap the hook and going into the final stitch pull through, pull through two and hold. It's a two together. So then going into where it's joining so just going into that join pull through, pull through two and hold it and then you're gonna pull through all three and what that is doing is it's filling in that space with color so that when you join it to the first standing double crochet or the first chain three it fills it in completely so it's completely invisible. So what I want to do is that I want you to hold now and I will see you next week and just put this aside if you wanna do more than one just grab some more yarn and let's continue and we'll see you next week as we continue our stitch along together with you this summer. Okay so did you finish week number one? Hopefully that you did. So it's gonna get tougher as we go along and now you've just learned how to grow your circle using the back post, front post in order to make the deep grooves. So we're gonna join me next week as we begin week number two of the study at Planet Earth. And I'd like to thank my friends on behalf of Yarnspirations as well here at the Crochet Guide. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>